Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad <laughs> Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 6th Chapter, Verse Number 41, The Killing of Demon Putana. Kata Dumasya Sarabhya. Avagraya Prajau Kasa Kimidam Kuti Eveti Vandanto Rajam Ayu Yoha Kata Dumasya Saurabhyam Avagraya Vrajau Kasaha Kimidam Kuta Eveti Vandanto Rajam Ayayuhu Kata Dumasya Saurabhya Avagraya Vrajakasaha <coughs> Kimidam Kuta Eveti Vandanto Raja Ayuha The Dumasya of the smoke emanating of the smoke emanating from the fire, burning the different parts of Putana's body. Saurabhyam, the fragrance of Agrahaya, when they smelled through their nostrils. Raja Oka Saha. The inhabitants of Rajabhumi in distant places. 
Come eat on. What is this? Fragrance. Kuta. Where does it come from? Eva. Indeed. Iti. In this way. Vandata. Speaking. Rajam. The place of Nanda Maharaj. Rajabhumi. Ayayuhu. Reached. Okay. Translation. Upon smelling the fragrance of the smoke emanating from Putana's burning body, many inhabitants of Rajamumi in distant places were astonished. Where is this fragrance coming from? They asked. Thus they went to the spot where Putana's body was being burnt. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada's two-line purport. The aroma of the smoke emanating from the burning fire is not always very favorable. Therefore, upon smelling such a wonderful fragrance, the inhabitants of Raj were astonished. Om Agyan Timidandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Vancha Kalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bebacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare hmm. So now Putana has been uh, killed by Krishna and then when she was killed by Krishna, she assumed her neat, very ugly form as a witch. There's mentions in other places is a kind of witch called Kateri. And they, uh, they have a mystic power. They, um, they can take a broom and simply by their mystic power they can fly on the broom. They call Kateri witches. And they usually cause problems. One devotee in New Vrindavan kept seeing one of our Matajis. She was riding on this broom, so I'm not sure how true that was, but anyway. <laughs> in New Vrindavan, it was quite an unusual place, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Somehow I survived. <laughs> it's really wild. Anyway. So, yeah, there is a, and Prabhupada talks about these K3 witches. They ride on brooms. And so Putana was a member of that clan. And now she's back to her normal uh, form. And upon seeing it, they all immediately, the residents of Vrindavan came and started burning the body. But others, when they were smelling the fragrant, the uh, smoke, and Prabhupada makes a point that you know, burning wood or burning anything, it's not necessarily a very pleasant smell. But this one was so fragrant that everyone was astonished and they wanted to see. So they all ran to the place to see. But the, under, the obvious understanding is that because she was touched by Krishna, automatically, and because of being touched by Krishna, there was a beautiful fragrance coming from her body. <laughs> so this is a very essential principle in devotional service. Anyone connected with, in any way, with Krishna develops good qualities. <laughs> the good qualities are covered by the association of the material energy. 
Every, everyone has good qualities. No one has bad qualities. But due to the association of material energy, according to the level of association, goodness, passion, or ignorance, we cover those good qualities with a kind of uh, opposite. It's like something is not what it is. So to be angry, to be envious, to be inimical, to be, uh, you know, fault-finding, all of these are due to the coverings of the soul. It's not the real soul. The real soul is pure and, and, it, and it reflects its devotion to Krishna and it has all good qualities. And so when a devotee engages in devotional service, they're actually connecting to some degree, according to that, the intensity of that connection with Krishna. And they develop all good qualities. Um, there was um, one of my god brothers. He runs a preaching center, which is now a full temple. He's been running this place for about almost 40 years, and he has a you know a altar there, and uh, there is a Jagannath deities on there. There's Gornitai deities. There's also Lakshmi Nisringa deities. Nice altar. There's a house converted into a temple. So someone wanted to make clothes for his deities, so he said, fine. So they made these outfits for all of the deities, and then they gave it to him. And he's looking at it, and he's, after they re he received it, he's thinking, these are not so nice. I don't think I'll put them on. <laughs> But then he thought, well, you know, I should, I'll just put it on once just to, you know, because they made it, should honor them. So he did. And then he said, and then later he told me this directly. He said, when I saw the deities, I said, this is amazing. This outfit looks so beautiful. <laughs> so when it wasn't connected to Krishna, he couldn't see him. And then it took on its natural beauty just by being connected with Krishna. So that happens when a devotee actually becomes very beautiful simply by uh, the association of the Lord or engaged in devotional service of the Lord like that. Um, in other words, we start to re assume again our natural good qualities. So that is bhakti. Bhakti brings out the good qualities of a devotee and that is the result of one's devotional service. So devotee, sometimes devotees ask, how do you know you're making advancement in devotional service? It's a common question. Like, is there, what is the indicators that you're actually progressing? So there's two indicators, <laughs> and these are, and the first one I mentioned, you're developing good qualities. <laughs> you're becoming humble, you're becoming tolerant, you're becoming peaceful, you're becoming free from finding fault with devotees, you're becoming happy. In other words, all of the natural quality which is intrinsic in the soul's existence starts to manifest in the life of devotee. And as these qualities start to develop, one can see that, uh, yes, one is actually making advancement. This is one of the prime indicators of how one can gauge whether they're making advancement or not. If you're still hanging on to the bad qualities or whatever, those negative qualities and material qualities, that means you have some ways to go yet, have to work on those things. <laughs> uh, the other indicator is uh, I'm becoming more and more enthusiastic to serve and I'm losing my attraction for Maya. That's the other if my, if Maya still looks good, then you're in Maya. <laughs> to put it very simply. <laughs> so, therefore, just like people come to me and they say, you know, especially people who who have to associate with the material energy, go to work or associate with people outside, they say, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm practicing this Krishna consciousness. And I, I'm losing my enthusiastic enthusiasm for for going to work. I don't want to go to work anymore. 
but I still got it because I need the money. <laughs> but I, I don't like my job. I used to like it. And so I used to like this person. Now they don't seem to be so attractive to me anymore. So yeah, these are all indicators of one's pro progress in devotional service. Maya, the Maya doesn't, it loses, it becomes pale. And, and devotional activities and the association of devotees becomes more and more, uh, what we say, attractive, more and more enthusiastic towards that, these activities. So that's the way we can kind of see how we're making a progress in devotional service. So sometimes we go back and forth between Krishna and Maya. A little bit of Maya, a little bit of Krishna. A little more Maya, a little less of Krishna. A little more of Krishna, a little less of Maya. No more Krishna, goodbye. <laughs> only, <laughs> only Maya. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> it can, because the process of devotional service is a very, Prabhupada said, Use an example, he said, it's like shaving with a razor. So when you're shaving with a razor, you have to be very attentive to make sure you, that you don't move in the wrong direction. And all of you, if you do, and if the razor's sharp, then there's some cut. So devotional service, and that analogy fits because uh, Krishna is right. If you look straight ahead, you see Krishna. If you look left, right, up, down, back, side, where it's this way, uh, catty corner, there's Maya. <laughs> She's everywhere around. But Prabhupada said, keep your, eye, keep your mind focused on Krishna or your activities. And although Maya is all around, she doesn't, you can't notice her. <laughs> She's there, but as soon as you want to notice her, you will. What is... What does noticing Maya mean? There is uh, means that there's, there's things in this world that look really enjoyable. <laughs> like, we, we can go through the list. <laughs> there's so many things. Just like another example of your making advancement in devotional service. Uh, this applies to both men and women, but. Uh, you're, you, you're going in devotional service and you're trying to become a brahmachari. Jai Sisi Panchatattva. And you're trying to, you know, stay s strict in here. And the women, and one, sometimes the women don't even want, they don't even want to get married. So, But then again, you're making nice advancement. And what happens? Your old boyfriend and your old girlfriend shows up. <laughs> It's the demigods, they do that. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> it happened to me. <laughs> My, some, some girl, about, I was in the movement about 30 years, and there she was. Mighty <laughs> well. <laughs> I was friendly, but I wanted to get out of there fast. <laughs> so, so it's like that. The demigods, they see. Well, if you're making advancement, they will do something to try to knock you off your advancement. So even the demigods work against you sometimes. Because Indra is thinking, boy, this person is really making nice advancement and getting pious activity. He's going to take over my position in the heavenly planets. Yeah, so if you perform austerity, even in devotional service, just like we have the example of Vishwamita Muni, he was so determined, he was a Kshatriya, but then he came across um, Vishishta Muni. And it's a long story how Vishishta Muni defeated, uh, Vishishta Muni was a Brahmana, and uh, Vishwamita Muni was a Kshatriya. I'll tell the story. Vishwamita Muni was a very, Vishwamita was his name at the time, very powerful Kshatriya. He had conquered everywhere. He had a very powerful uh, army. So he showed up at the ashram of Vishishta Muni with all of his soldiers. And Vishishta Muni welcomed him. And, Vish and he said, can you supply food for my men? 
He said, yeah, because Vashishtha Muni had a common Denu cow. And that common Denu cow was just the same as a Sarabi cow. They're, they can they can do anything. So he can just ask the cow. And so all the men were sitting down, big army, and he told the cow, you know, produce a big feast for everyone. So out of the udder of the cow, all of these, these succulent preparations, so many different varieties, big feast, and they served the entire army along with Vishwamita. Vishwamita Muni was really amazed to see that. And then, although he was satisfied and happy, he got greedy. He said, uh, you know, well, I'm, you know, I'm a king and uh, you should give me your cow. <laughs> he wanted that cow. And Vishwamita Muni said, uh, Vishishta Muni said, I, I, this cow, it's, I do all my puja, she supplies everything. And I can, I, I'm sorry, I cannot part with, with her. Vishwamita Muni became really angry and he tried to forcibly take the cow away. And, and he grabbed the cow and started pulling it. The cow looked at uh, Vishishta Muni to help her, and he did. Mm -hmm. So he ordered the cow, create an army, and she did. And out of the, her udder, all of these fierce soldiers came out with big, powerful weapons and destroyed his, own, his whole army. <laughs> and he, it was nothing left of his army, and he was, he was there, he was practically, you know, finished too. So uh, Vishwamita Muni saw what power he had. <laughs> he thought he was powerful. Well, when uh, Vishishta Muni, you know, came, produced all of these soldiers simply from this cow, he thought Brahma Tejas, power of the Brahmas, are even more greater than the power of the Kshatriyas. And that's true. Just like when King Vena, who was a very powerful king, but he was somewhat demoniac at the same time, uh, he had many Brahmins working under him. And then because of his nature, he wanted to stop all Brahminical sacrifices, and the Brahmins were angry at him for that. But he was insistent, and he was a very arrogant person. So um, they, they pleaded with him, my dear king, you know, you can't do that. And this, this, these sacrifices must go on. But he said, no, I am God. If you want to perform sacrifices, it's for me only. <laughs> That's what he said. So they, they figured it about time to get rid of this guy. <laughs> so they did some uh, puja some mantras, some yagyas, and they killed him. <laughs> Simply by the power of yagya. You can kill a person on the subtle level too. <laughs> Simply if you know the art, and, you know. The, if you read Radha Swami's uh, account, The Journey Home, how many of you read that book, The Journey Home? It's really interesting, yeah. Maharaj talks about meeting one gentleman there on his travels. And this man, he came across these tantrics and uh, somehow or other they became angry at him. He did something that they didn't like. So they wanted to kill him. So they started chanting all these mantras to kill him. <laughs> and uh, the only way, he went to one sadhu for help. He was dying from the mantras. He says the only way that he could uh, you know, continue was that he'd have to chant the Ram Mantra, Lord Ramachandra's Maha Mantra or Prana Mantra. And so he was, he was constantly chanting. And he, he, when he was with Radhanath Swami Maharaj, he was saying, if I stop chanting, they can kill me at any time. It's this mantra that's keeping me alive, that's all. <laughs> that's also an interesting point because uh, when you're chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, or you're chanting the names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, nothing material can happen to you, <laughs> nothing. It's, 
especially Krishna's name, very powerful. Because mantra is actually the essence of uh, power. More power comes from mantra. <laughs> So that's why we chant Hare Krishna, because, and devotees become powerful. <laughs> devotees become powerful simply, devotees don't try for power, but they become powerful simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Because it's not different than Krishna, just like we see here, the power, the burning of the body of Putana witch, and her hideous body, now smelling so sweet and fragrant simply by touching the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So I mean, anything that comes in contact with... So, so that is very powerful. So, um, yeah, I was thinking also, this idea of chanting, um, devotees have to be also be very careful and not to use their power in the wrong way. <laughs> because devotees have power. Just like uh, um, you read, just like when the two sons of Kavera, Nalukuvar and Mani Griva, they, um, they were licentious, not properly acting properly in front of Naramuni, and he cursed them to become trees. So simply by the curse of a very powerful person can change the whole lifestyle of a person. I don't know if I should tell you this story or not. <laughs> I should tell you? Yeah. We had, when I, we were, I was a brahmachari back in 1970s, maybe 74, this was way back when I first joined. We had one brahmachari there. He was really kind of like harassing everybody. <laughs> In those days, we let everybody come to Hare Krishna. <laughs> anybody, if they showed a little enthusiasm, and a lot of times they would fight with their their god brothers, or it was like that. So there was one, and he was always harassing. So one day he, he really harassed me. You know, he was harassing me before, but this time I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I said, so I cursed him. <laughs> and it came true. <laughs> I said, he was a brahmachari and he was proud of it. I said, you're going to fall down to household life. <laughs> <laughs> and about six months later, the wedding bells were ringing. <laughs> So anyway, I you know I usually kind of like tolerate all of this, but <laughs> this time he went too far, so I had to do something to slow it down. I think I did service for the other devotees too. <laughs> they felt relieved a little bit because when you get a wife, you kind of calm down a little bit. <laughs> you kind of like you know just mellow out, <laughs> at least at the beginning. <laughs> So yeah, so we have to be careful uh, of cursing, because devotees do have power. But devotees don't do that. If devotees, devotees are more like trying to give their best wishes and blessings to others so they can make advancement in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, so this is a very uh, it's interesting principle because it just shows the power of Krishna consciousness. As soon as one comes into Krishna consciousness, they get connected to Krishna through the process of, of serving Krishna, and then all of their good qualities start to manifest. But then sometimes you hear this situation, well, you know, I used to be a nice person, now I came to Hare Krishna, look at me, I'm a mess. <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Have experienced that? That's in the beginning. When you first join, what's happening is the ghee is on the fire. I'm sorry, the butter's on the fire. The butter's on the fire, and the, the, the result is to make the ghee. So what happens is when we begin our devotional service, our bad qualities, our negative qualities are coming out. 
and they're coming to the surface. We're starting to see them before we can't see them when we're practicing our material life because we're like everybody else. Now then, but then they start coming out, and then the devotee thinks, "Ah, oh, man, this blood, this process doesn't work." <laughs> It's actually working really nicely. So what do you do when that happens? You just don't give any attention to these things. Let it go. Just like when negative thoughts come to your mind, what do you do? You don't think about them. You forget about them immediately. I remember when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement back in 1972. This was in the end of 72. I was going to the New York Temple, and they had a program where you could live in a, this, it was like a house next to the temple. It was called the Bhakta House. So you couldn't live in a temple as a full-time devotee unless you trained as a Bhakta first, so it was a Bhakta program. So devotees, people who came, showed some interest. They joined there. And then we would do service for the temple. So they would, we would come to the temple and do various service. So I had this uh, bhakta leader who was in charge of a, a particular type of service, and he would really chastise me. <laughs> he would say, kill that thought or else it'll kill you. <laughs> I mean, that's the way he said it. <laughs> I'm uh, even more, more enthusiastic. Kill that thought or it'll kill you. <laughs> So I got the message. <laughs> I was thinking if he, if I don't kill the thought, he might kill me. <laughs> so yeah, it was that was the old days. <laughs> you guys have it easy here. <laughs> Things were tough in the old days, but it was good. It was it was bootleg. It was boot it was boot camp, <laughs> hard training. <laughs> so. Yeah, so the, the idea is that when thoughts come into the mind immediately, unless they're Krishna conscious or free from anything sinful or yeah, what we say offensive, immediately divert one's attention to. Sometimes people think like when a bad thought comes in the mind or something negative comes in the mind, we want to analyze it, <laughs> try to look at it and see, mm, but that's not really good. And then you're, you're looking at it from that perspective, trying to understand. But that's what you're doing is you're actually feeding it. It's growing. So a devotee keeps his mind on Krishna, or she keeps her mind on Krishna, but sometimes the mind goes somewhere else because the net nature of the mind is chanchala. It keeps moving. And so... Uh, but when these uh, apparent negative thoughts or something that is not conducive to our spiritual advancement, say, just let it go immediately. Don't even think about it, try to understand it or analyze it. And the best way is to bring your mind back to Krishna. Yeah. And if you keep practicing that way, eventually you become Krishna conscious. Yeah. You make him Krishna conscious that way, just simply by keeping that mind connected to devotional service. And because, and then the mind, then the devotee develops all good qualities. <clears throat> okay, any comments, questions? Yes, uh, Radha Vidandidi. <coughs> Sorry about that last uh, statement there. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so thank you very much. It was a uh, very eye-opening <laughs> class in many aspects. And uh, I was thinking about, you said that one of the sim symptoms of progressing is uh, that we develop good qualities like tolerance and, and uh, other qu good qualities. And um, I, I had this experience that sometimes we think that we are more tolerant just because there is no, no, not so much suffering because things are going better. And, uh, and we get this false idea that, oh, I'm progressing. But uh, in reality, and not. That's not. That's not the indication. That's simply Krishna's mercy. The actual progression is, I mentioned those two qualities that I mentioned. 
two characteristics. If things are going good, that's simply Krishna's just showing you some some mercy. Yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my point wasn't that uh, things are going better, but uh, because things are going better, uh, we don't have to tolerate so much, and we think that we are more tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I experienced this with others, and then I also realized that, oh, that's also in me. <laughs> so so how, how can we know that this if is real think, tolerance? If you think like that, then you'll get a test, and Krishna will show you how you're intolerant you are <laughs> you'll get tested if you start being somewhat proud or feeling that you know you're making advancement then all of us very soon not very long but very soon you'll 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 face to face with that you know that situation just to should just to test you so the body is always thinking, I'm, you know, it's by the mercy of my spiritual masters, by the mercy of Krishna coming through the association of devotees, that I can do anything that I can make, and that I can actually engage in devotional service. The body doesn't take credit; it simply gives credit to others. But when we do something wrong, we should take credit. <laughs> I was just hearing this uh, this person who was the uh, one of the prime ministers or very big person in Nazi Germany. His name was Goebbels. You've heard of Goebbels? Yeah. He used to read the Bhagavad Gita. And one of the things he found in the Gita that he liked is that you're not the doer. So he was doing all bad things and he's saying, I'm not the doer. <laughs> so that's taking the philosophy and twisting it around. So therefore this philosophy is very dangerous in the hands of the wrong people. Because they can use it in a, in, in, in a very malicious way or in a very uh, selfish way. <laughs> Yeah. So if you, but if you're feeling like that, it's a, it's, then it's we shouldn't feel like that. Well, I'm becoming more tolerant. You should think I have to, because if you do, then you, you then you start trying less to work on your, because the whole process of devotional service is two. Engage in devotional service and work on developing the qualities that are needed to practice devotional service. Practice humility, practice tolerance, practice uh, being detached from you know, loss and gain. Practice the, these things you have to constantly be aware of. How am I acting? Am I acting properly? Am I thinking properly? Am I... All of these, the devotee is very introspective. If you start feeling you're okay, then the introspection becomes, you know, you know, stopped. <laughs> so, just to confirm, is my if my understanding is correct uh, of your answer? So, when we do intros introspection we generally should look for our faults or... Yeah, we should see where I need to improve on. Thank you, it was yeah. very, very helpful. Prabhupada would say Krishna consciousness is, is simply getting rid of what you don't need. <laughs> when you get rid of everything you don't need, then you're Krishna conscious. Because <laughs> you're pure. You're a pure soul, and everything less than that is things that we don't are still there within our our consciousness or in our activities. It was really helpful because previously I didn't understand uh, that sometimes I heard that we should check how we are progressing, but uh, also the quality of humility. So how 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 could someone notice that, oh, I'm a higher level now than before, so it's not about that, but I have to look for what I should improve. 
Well, as soon as you think like that, you're in a dangerous position. Then you, what happens? You either get proud or you'll be tested. Just Krishna will test you, just or allow Maya to test you, just to see if you're actually there or not. <laughs> Dave, I'm read. Oh, it's Guise got Okay, yeah. Yes, uh, Mitra. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for a nice lecture, Maharaj. So, uh, you mentioned in the end the need of introspection, but before you also mentioned that uh, we should not dwell on negative thoughts, so like to redirect on Krishna conscious thoughts. So, what is the difference? Well, I was talking about things in the mind that appear, such as if you see someone and you look at them in a, you, know, you look at them in a, as seeing their faults, and you think, oh, this is wrong. Then it says, if you look at someone, you see their faults, you should immediately look for their good qualities, immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just more like a mind. But when it comes to our own progress, we, these things will become apparent. You'll start to see where you are lacking. And then you have to, then you think, oh, this is where I have to work. I have to work on this. I have to become more humble. I have to become more tolerant. I have to become more attentive in my service. You know, these things you can see simply by the fact that they're, it's less than what what the ideal is. They just, they'll they'll appear automatically. But it's not about. It's about making. It's about seeing yourself in such a way as that you are trying to get rid of these things. But when these other, when the mind starts bringing negative thoughts out, then immediately you should reject those negative thoughts. If you're looking at yourself and seeing your own f faults, that's not a negative thought. That's a good thought. <laughs> that's a positive thought, because <laughs> it's it's something that'll be that'll help you in your in your Krishna, and that's Krishna showing us sometimes. So, observing our own negatives, it's okay, but observing others' negatives... Yeah, or just negative thoughts in general. Negative means something that's going to take you away from Krishna consciousness, or something that's offensive, something that's sinful. But the thoughts that come with our own uh, revelations of our own uh, and liberties, our own lacks. These are, okay, these are, these are ways of purifying. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I saw another hand up somewhere. Yeah. Sadbuj. <laughs> so I just remember one verse from Bhagavad Gita when Krishna says. Uh, person who killed and person who is killed they are actually don't doing anything and uh, according to that uh, opinion of uh, that person who turn in negative way Bhagavad Gita uh, qu question it is I mean tricky verse how to understand both side that's my question yeah. mm -hmm. if you understand well even person who kill he didn't like to anything Nobody can kill and nobody can be killed, because <laughs> yeah, the soul yeah, is yeah, eternal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can eliminate the body, but that's, and then you, you have to take the context of what is being said. Mm. No one dies, and no one causes another person to die either. <laughs> but don't think, well, that's just like that that uh, Nazi officer, he was thinking, he was in charge of the gas chamber, putting people into the, 
And he was thinking, well, but he's reading, he's reading the Gita saying, you know, I'm not the doer. <laughs> There's a slight truth to that, but it doesn't apply to the situation. <laughs> But that's another point. <laughs> because it's karma that's killing people. They're getting the results of their karma. Nothing happens. That's why when in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, when Parikshit Maharaj came across the cow and the bull being beaten by the, he asked him, who, who, is, who is the perpetrator? Who is the cause? Why, who is doing this to you? They, neither of them answered. They said, they, they, they gave philosophical statements, but no one blamed anyone. And then when uh, Maharaj Prikshit could understand that, he glorified the bull as being the personification of Dharma or religion, because you understand that the, he who identifies the perpetrator also becomes implicated into the reactions of that. So if someone does something bad to you, and you blame that person, you also get a reaction for blaming. Because that person is just delivering your karma, that's all. <laughs> and Paramatma also allow him to do that. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's in general. Prabhupada used to say, don't be disturbed by the instrument of your karma. Yeah. So therefore, a devotee can be tolerant and a devotee can be free from, you know, trying to react by, by just by uh, learning to, to understand that whatever's coming my way, I can learn from it, I can gain from that. There's some reason for it. I can get rid of some bad qualities, I can develop some good qualities, I can become more attached to Krishna, I can develop some knowledge. A devotee doesn't blame anyone, may simply take, a, take the opportunity to make advancement by any situation. But that's not easy. <laughs> I didn't say it was easy, <laughs> but because of our conditioned nature, yeah. This is a long discussion. We can, we'll get into, this could go on for hours, <laughs> because it opens up another area of discussion, too. But, yeah. So, yeah, that's the, that statement you, you made is simply from a particular perspective, that the soul is eternal and can never be killed. In Nahanyate Hanyamane Sarire, Ajo Nitya Shaspato Yam Purana, Nahanyate Hanyamane Sarire. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death, nor having once to been, does he ever cease to be. He's unborn, eternal, primeval, undying, immutable. He's not slain when the body is slain. <laughs> So from that verse, yes, no one dies. No one's born either. These are phenomenal material energy and so. Material energy is called the illusory energy. It makes things appear to be true, but it's not <laughs> on the absolute platform. But you can't you can't live on the you can't work from the absolute platform and think, well, you know, nobody dies, so I don't even die, so I can, you know, just walk out in the middle of the car street. I won't get, you know, I'm not going to die. <laughs> yeah, you're not, but your body will get smashed. <laughs> so you, you think, well, what we understand, the body is given to us by the material, which is the, the gift of God, so we can make a progress to, to get back home, back to God. And so the body is a vehicle. That's why when you, if you cause harm to anyone, you get a reaction for that because you're disturbing their, uh, their vehicle <laughs> for making, you know, 
So, therefore, there is a reaction in that way. Study these books. It's a really very deep philosophical because it helps you to cut through the illusion of this material energy. Another one, if I can ask. Yeah. Uh, I just heard from one lecture, just this point briefly, that Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Maharaj used to say, uh, if somebody want to progress too quickly, he will fall down. Uh, did you hear that, and can you make some commentary? Yeah. I didn't hear that directly, but it's true. Uh, the process is quick and it's slow, depending on of the factors engaged in that devotee's life. It can be very quick, but, but generally, the point is generally, it's slow, or it's gradual. Gradual is a better word. So those who want to make fast progress, it's just like maybe you'll, you're in a 30 miles an hour zone, and you, you start going 60 miles an hour, you get a ticket. <laughs> Because you're not supposed to be going that fast. <laughs> so if he was some artificially try to charge, as Sachi Nandana Maharaj used to say, charge the gates of heaven. <laughs> In other words, try to go and make it and go real fast back to Godhead. You, you might find it, you might find yourself kind of embarrassed. So uh, the bodies don't really focus so much on advancement, they focus on service. And that's where all the advancement comes, by focusing on your service. Focusing on the qualities you need to serve nicely. You know, all of these things the devotee focuses on. What am I making advancement? Yeah, that's not, you know, that'll happen automatically. You don't have to think about that. Just like they say, if you want to be happy, do one thing, stop trying. <laughs> yeah, and you'll be happy if you stop trying to be happy. <laughs> we used to, you know, when, you know, when you first join or even before, then you think, yeah, I'm going to be like this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to give up this. I'm going to try that, yeah, yeah, I got it down now, this is my new plan, now I know how to live life, <laughs> my latest plan, <laughs> and then after about a week, you kind of figure it doesn't work, so you try another one, <laughs> just try to serve nice, <laughs> and uh, yeah, serve with enthusiasm, and uh, keep nice relationships with the devotees, and you'll be happy in Krishna consciousness. And chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Anything else? Any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.